right so now we have seen all these things buckets creation of buckets upload of uh, buckets deletion of objects let us go ahead and uh, try to access this as a demo in our console so that is what i'm going to do now i'm going to go to my uh, s3 uh, console So now that I am, we are in the S3 dashboard, I am going to choose the Mumbai region for most of my demos. When Mumbai region is not sufficient, then I will go to some other region. So the first thing you want to always ensure when you are going in your companies and working is ensure that you are in the right region. And here I want to go to Mumbai. So here it is. Click on that and that gets activated. And you can see here the URL also changes to AP South 1. So these are the two ways you will keep track of which region you are in. So now I want to go to S3. So I don't know where it is. So I'm just going to type here S3. And Amazon will bring up the link for that. Click on that. There are already some uh, buckets in my account. So that should not be a problem. We can create a new bucket and then we can add upload uh, objects to that uh, bucket, new bucket that you are creating. So you don't have to worry about it. So as you can see here, there are a few buckets already in my account and the dashboard. This is called as the S3 dashboard and you can see here. This is the bucket name and then whether it is a public access is available or not. You can see it because of some uh, recent uh, mishaps or uh, security incidents. Amazon has created this uh, new filter. Whenever you give public access to a bucket, you will see an yellow color uh, uh, thingy like this. As you can see here, it's highlighted here. Uh, so uh, it will say public 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 uh, so to, so that you know that you should not put some secure data or uh, Confidential data into public buckets. It gives you a reminder there and then uh, the other interesting aspect uh, Buckets are universal or s3 service is universal. So you don't have to choose a region when you are talking about uh, The dashboard itself you can see here once you choose an s3 uh, you get this clear notification saying S3 does not say region selection, but to improve your latency, what you can say is you put my bucket in particular region. So that is what it means. You don't have to uh, choose a region when you are going here, but when you are creating a bucket, it will ask you to choose a region. That is to improve the latency part. But buckets are universal, so no two buckets can have the same name. And finally, some metadata related to when my bucket was created and all those things. And this is a summary information. I have totally nine buckets and none of them are public and I have them in two different regions. As you can see here, that is Virginia is there and also in Mumbai there. So when I want to create a new bucket, all I'm going to do is click on this create bucket. And it is going to give me this nice little dashboard, which is having about four tabs to complete the information. So the first step is enter a DNS compliant name for my uh, bucket name. I cannot have a bucket which is starting with hyphen or I cannot start a bucket name which is having a dot. I cannot start a bucket name which is having a number as well. So your bucket name has to be compliant with the URL or a DNS standards. But I can have hyphen or a dot, uh, not dot hyphen after uh, a few text. Say for example, I say um, Galaxy S3 bucket demo S3 bucket. Let us call it this way. And I'm choosing my region here as Mumbai. I can choose any region. It doesn't matter. It is just that the latency will increase or decrease when I'm trying to access the object itself. And here it says, do I want to copy an existing bucket? Do I want to access the settings of any bucket? Uh, sometimes it will be useful if you have configured a permissions for a particular bucket and you want to use that. No, I don't want to do any of them for the first time. So I'm going to go ahead and click on create next. And uh, in the top, you can see here, first we are doing name and region. Next is select properties. So once we are done this, this uh, one item will get colored. You can see here name and region is ticked off. We are doing properties now. Remember, I, we, I spoke about versioning. So th this is how you enable versioning. Click on this and you can click on enable versioning. Click on save. So if you want to add some tags or metadata, nowadays everybody should be familiar with the tags. When you upload a photo, you usually tag somebody uh, in Facebook. So something like that here. So let us say this is I'm going to upload some files. 
So I'm going to say name as key and the value as files and click on save. That is my tag. And whether I want to enable encryption, uh, we'll come to that after seeing the encryption classes. But oh, if you want to know quickly, all you have to do is just click on one of these things and Amazon will automatically encrypt your objects. But we will see that later. So click on next. So here is the permissions, whether I want to give read write permissions or public permissions. In this case, by default, only the owner of the account will have permissions. Nobody else will have permissions. So if I want to give public permission, see manage public permissions, all I have to do is click on this and say grant public read access to this bucket. Uh, immediately Amazon gives a warning. This bucket has public read access. Everybody in the world can read access to this bucket. So I'm going to leave it as it is because this is a demo bucket and I want uh, you people to access anything that I upload here. So I'm going to enable this and it is not necessary in production level. You will be very careful when you're choosing those options in production. So click on next. So you see here we have done with name and region. We have done with properties. We have done with the permissions and it gives me a review of all the things that we have selected and I can go ahead and edit any of them. If I want to say S3 bucket uh, first bucket, let me just go ahead and edit it and then click on next, next, next. So my bucket name has changed Galaxy S3 first bucket. Click on create bucket. Remember earlier I had nine buckets. If I click on create bucket, I should have totally 10 buckets now in my account. So it should get refreshed in a minute. Okay, error setting permissions. Let me just go ahead and refresh my screen and see what has happened. Why it is complaining about not setting permissions. So the public permissions has not been set because there are no objects. Nothing is there. Let me just go ahead and open this bucket. So here is my new bucket that has been just now created. Galaxy S3 first bucket. So click on that. And as you can see here, this bucket is empty. Upload new objects to get it started. So as of now, nothing is there. So that is why it is not able to set the public properties. Uh, you can see here the make public option is there, but it is not enabled or none of the options are enabled. Uh, because there are no items as of now in this bucket. So how do I add items to my bucket now? So you go ahead and click on upload and once you upload, click on upload, you get this uh, nice uh, friendly dashboard uh, to which you can drag and drop or you can click on add files option. So let me just go ahead and add some files. This is very simple. You must have been very familiar with uploading objects in your account or email anytime. Now that I have added two objects, index.html and error.html, let us go ahead and see what is happening in the next step. So S3 is asking you whether you want to give public access to these objects. Yes, I am. Uh, I want public access to these objects uh, so that everybody else can access these files. So click on next. And once again, it is asking me, do I want encryption or not? I'm going to leave them as none. Click on next and click on upload. And quickly it will change here and you can see here bottom of the screen. It is the upload action is happening 50% successful and I see here one successful. That means that one upload activity has been successful and it reflects one of the items immediately. But if we click on this refresh button, I should be able to see both of them there. So you can see here my index.html and error.html. Both the files are there on the root level directory or a top level directory. How do I create a, a folder here or another subdirectory? So click, go ahead, click on this create folder and Amazon is going to ask you what is going to be the name of the folder and I'm going to call it images. And once again, encryption, no, I don't want that. Click on save. So now I've created a subdirectory and I'm going to upload an object to my subdirectory. Now let me get inside that and click on upload, add files. And uh, once again, I just need to navigate to my uh, folder. It is here. I want to add a uh, water drop. Click on open, click on next. So once again, I just want to ensure this object is also public. So everything in this bucket is public. So click on next and upload. So there we go. Water droplet is also available.
So now what we have done is we have created a bucket. We have uploaded objects to my bucket and we have also given public access to all my objects in my bucket. So how do I access it? That is my next question. So if you click on this icon here, it will give up a pop up window. I see here pop up is blocked. But anyway, it comes here and it gives me a summary of all those things. This is the latest version of the file and it is saying it is in standard access, not in frequent access or reduce the redundancy storage. And it is asking me to download it or delete it. And remember, I spoke about an URL for this object. So uh, we can do it here. Let me click on this. It will open me into a new tab. So here uh, you get more properties and more things so you can I can if you have not made it public already I can click on this and make it make public. So you see here it says success and this is the URL of that bucket. So if I want to access this particular object in my bucket all I have to do is copy this and put it into my browser window. So let me put it into my browser window and press enter. We should most probably see a page which looks like this. Uh, welcome to Galaxy Infotech AWS online training demo. So if you are able to access it, I, I can share this URL with you guys. So can, you can also check it out from your own browsers. Suppose say I want to change uh, permissions to my bucket. I don't want anybody to access uh, error.html. All I have to do is click on error.html and I need to change my permissions here. So if I go over here, error.html permissions will be here and you can see here there is a public everyone access is there and I have to only remove that. So click on that automatically Amazon will pop up a new uh, window and it says read object is there. All I have to do is click on that and click on save. This object is no longer publicly accessible. So if I go to my browser window and have this URL error.html and refresh this page, I should get an access denied uh, error message, which means that this object is no longer publicly accessible to anybody. So that is how you define who has to access your permissions. So this window is quite powerful in that way. You can have add access to a third party account. Also some other client that wants access to your bucket or some other partner or business or colleague that you want to share your files with. So you can specifically provide them access. And then you have a programmatic access also. You can define certain business rules saying certain IP address can only needs to access my bucket. So those kind of flexibilities is also available when you are configuring account level access. But for now, all you need to know is how to set up your public access and make it private or add some other account and give them the account level access. So you either you can give your account ID or an email address here and everybody in that account either will get a read access or a write access also. So that is on the Amazon read access write access. So how do I enable versioning here? So you can see here the uh, let me just make this go back and uh, enable this as public access. I'm just reverting back my changes. So I'm going to show you how a different versions gets enabled here. I'm going to go back to my bucket and index.html uh, as you can see here this is the latest version i'm going to quickly make a small change in index.html and come ahead and uh, upload it and see what happens so before that let me just go to my url and it says galaxy aws online training demo so let us make a quick change and come back so this is a sample HTML file that I was uh, uh, using. As you can see here, I opened the index.html and it says Galaxy Infotech AWS online demo. All I'm going to say is it is an S3 demo that we are talking about. So I'm just going to add the word S3 bucket demo or S3 bucket versioning demo. I'm just going to save this file now. And yeah, when I save it, you'll see this little tiny dot on the top of my screen that will disappear now once I save it. So I'm going to upload this object into my S3 bucket now. So let me go back to my root folder, click on upload, add files, and I'm going to choose index.html again. And even if I scroll down here, you, you see here in the right hand side, my window, it says, so this is a new file I'm uploading, click on open. Uh, next 
and make sure public access still remains click on next click on next upload it is started it should get completed anytime and let me refresh my screen so if I click on this object now and go here you can see here there are two versions the first version was done at 821 and the latest version was done at 830 so I'm just going to leave this page as it is copy this URL and go ahead and put it into the browser window again and if you guys have that URL you can go ahead and refresh it on your browser window also and you should able to see the demo there I mean the text has been changed and we are accessing a different object and remember the file name is the same and automatically Amazon keeps track of the different versions and you can go ahead and download any of the older versions anytime so that is how Amazon enables you to keep track of multiple versions and restore any old version and access them so if I want an older version all I have to do is click on this and automatically it will download it and it will open it if I click on this you can see here uh, this does not have the access to the image locally so that is why you don't see the image but anyway the text is the older text that was supposed to and if I re-upload this one back into my uh, console it will revert back to the older version or if I don't want this change I don't like this change all I have to do is click on delete and uh, Amazon will automatically revert my uh, older version as the latest version and if I go ahead and uh, refresh this window automatically my changes are getting reversed now so quickly what I have shown you is we have shown you how versioning works and for some reason if somebody has accidentally modified a file and you want to revert back to the older file uh, either you download it and re-upload it or you just go ahead and, and delete the latest version and automatically the, the older version will be pointed as the latest version and you revert back any changes so that is how powerful uh, s3 bucket versioning concepts are so all those things are taken care of automatically so that is it for today